<laughs> okay, guys, now they're going to talk about um, editing and fonts and stuff like that. Let's see how to use a special font for comfortable editing and how to use WYSIWYG display. Court reporters in the United States typically bill by the page and print their transcripts using fonts that emulate old typewriters. Well, you can print with a monospaced font while editing using a proportional font. Settings, display, editing font. Times New Roman is usually available. Now let's zoom in to take advantage of the display space. Much easier to read. You see what it was doing there? I, I really haven't. I, I kind of use it in the same one, but it makes it a little bit easier. Some people like different fonts when they're editing rather than what the actual transcript is going to come out like. So I don't, I don't really use it, but I mean, if you want to use it, this is how you kind of do it. I'll kind of back it up a little bit and show you. With a monospaced font while editing using a proportional font. Settings display, editing font. Times New Roman is usually available. Now let's zoom in to take advantage of the display space. Much easier to read. When I you see how to do that? I'm working with parts of my transcript that are aligned in columns. I like to view the text exactly as it will be printed using monospaced fonts. So I've set up a speed key, shift Control f 12 that opens a menu of choices, the first of which is WYSIWYG Preview. And when I want to switch back to my default display, the second choice returns to my default display using proportional editing fonts. So this is one speed key worth remembering. Not really used a whole lot, but I mean, if, if you want to do it, that's kind of the way um, of messing around with the fonts or whatever. But I mean, I don't I don't really use it. I don't know if anybody else that really uses it. So, um, let's see what happens. All of you guys know how to do real time finding com ports, the different com ports and stuff, right? All right, we'll look at that. That's right, you're supposed to keep it all the same COM port, right? Let's yeah. see how to use Windows Device Manager to find out which COM ports are available for input from your Steno machine and for real-time output. An easy way to open the Device Manager is to right-click on the My Computer icon and then select Properties. If you don't see this icon on your Windows desktop, you can click on the Start button, then right-click on My Computer and select Show on Desktop. I'll go ahead and right-click on it and say, Show me the properties. Now I'll click on Hardware, Device Manager. Now I'll click on the plus sign next to Ports. My new USB serial port has been assigned COM4, so I'll use this information to adjust the user settings in my CAT software. Did you understand what he was saying there? Okay. And that's how you do it there. Uh, Alt T when you want to, you know, start your real time. Y'all kind of know that. Is that the way y'all start it? That's no idea. Well, if I'm gonna edit it, I do. Okay. Like if I'm gonna go back and edit. All right. Many computers allow you to use earphones to monitor what a microphone is picking up. You'll be able to hear better, cut down your reaction time, and maybe even write faster. In the presentation entitled Sound Recorder Test, we showed how to use Windows Sound Recorder to adjust your recording volume. There we went to the Audio Properties, 
to adjust the microphone volume for recording. This time we want to adjust the microphone volume for playback. How loud the sound will be as we're listening through earphones to what the microphone is picking up. When you go to adjust the volume for sound playback, you may not see a column for microphone. But just go to Options, Properties, and put a check in the box next to Mic Volume. If you do not see a column for Mic Volume, that means that microphone monitoring is not encouraged on your computer. By default, the microphone volume for playback is muted, so be sure to attach your earphones before unmuting the microphone, otherwise you're likely to hear a loud squealing noise. With the mic unmuted, you can raise or lower this volume level to a comfortable one. In effect, you're using your computer as an amplifier to help you hear even in a large room. If you're in a courtroom, you can place your microphone between the judge and the witness, so you'll not only be able to hear the witness clearly, but you'll also be able to hear what needs to be written as counsel approach the bench for conference. That's kind of further down the road. It's not really for you guys. Um, that's just kind of further down the road. Uh, a lot of this stuff we've already gone over. This is kind of an overview. Um, recording that he gave me so I mean it's just kind of going over some of the stuff so do you have any questions about any of this stuff dictionary searches conflicts ASCII files 